Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our readings remind us that God often chooses the small and humble to do great things. Before we begin, let us take a moment to silently prepare ourselves to receive the light of Christ. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We begin our celebration here this morning as we should begin and end all things in our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Thank you. As we gather on this fourth Sunday of Advent, let's just take a moment to call to mind the many gifts and blessings in our lives, especially the gift of the Eucharist that we celebrate and share in here this morning. And Lord Jesus, during this season of Advent, you nourish our faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In Christ Jesus, during this season of Advent, you deepen our hope. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, during this season of Advent, you strengthen our love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us in our weaknesses and in our failures, and bring us all to our lasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord, You, Bethlehem Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times, Therefore, the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord. In the majestic name of the Lord, his God, 
and they shall remain, for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings, you took no delight. Then I said, As is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocaust and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ready for Christmas? Ready or not, here it comes. How many times have you been asked that question as if somehow Christmas is not going to happen next weekend unless we are ready? You know, unless we have all of our Christmas cookies baked and our shopping completed and the house cleaned and decorated and the Christmas cards all mailed, well, it just can't happen. Well, just to let you know a little secret, ready or not, it's going to happen. Wouldn't we live with a lot less stress and burden and have a better understanding of Christmas if we really believe that, that Christ will come ready or not? Because long before our Christmas plans was God's plan. In fact, until we believe that Christmas is not dependent on our gift-giving, but rather on the celebration of God's gift-giving, we miss the whole point of the Christmas story. So what can you and I do this last week of Advent to be ready and waiting in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ? What can we do? I think John the Baptist, in our readings during this Advent season, gives us a helpful hint in being ready. He suggests that we listen to and be a voice, a voice calling others as he did to prepare the way of the Lord. He was a voice calling out to encourage and push others to do what they could to prepare the way of the Lord. How our world needs that voice today. A voice that calls on us to live simply and faithfully and lovingly. A voice that encourages us to forgive when others might advise us to get even. Our world needs that voice that directs us not to turn our backs and walk away, when society would say, don't get involved. We need that voice that pushes us to never, ever stop believing, even when the obstacles that we face in life challenge the very core of our being. And don't you think our world needs more voices that motivate us to live justice, and peace radically, wonderfully, and completely, despite how we might be led to believe it won't matter anyway. The world needs those voices that prepare the way of the Lord in order for it to be ready. It really needs those who are inspired and crazy in love with God and are not hesitant to voice that love that direct us and motivate us to be ready in preparing the way of the Lord. 
So how about it? Can we be that voice this last week of Advent, calling others to holiness, to forgiveness, to faithfulness, to kindness, to respect and complete joy that will help prepare the way of the Lord? Can we be that voice? There's an old favorite Christmas song. You've probably heard it several times these past few weeks on the radio. And it goes something like this. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Okay, so I'm not Bing Crosby. But in trying to answer the question, what should we do to be ready to prepare the way of the Lord, I'd like to suggest that our version of that song be this. I'm dreaming of a right Christmas. A right Christmas that doesn't mean that our Christmas cookies and our baking and our decorating and our perfect gift giving and our Christmas tree and lights are so important that Christmas can't happen without them. It doesn't mean that a, a Martha Stewart table and a perfect family gathering are necessary for Christmas to happen. Think again. God has and will again gift us with the presence of Christ. Ready or not? God has and will come again and dwell among us as God chooses. Ready or not? All we need to do, all we ever have needed to do, all we can do, all we must do, is to listen and be a voice calling out to others to prepare the way of the Lord and to make that dream of a right Christmas become a reality. Ready or not, here it comes. Let's stand now for the profession of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and of earth, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of him. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gather here this morning as people of faith, we now present our needs and our prayers. <coughs> For the Pope and all priests, that God may guide them as teachers and preachers of the good news. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders in the civic and business worlds may have the gift of right reason to focus properly on the welfare of their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this faith community 
who serve in leadership roles. May they be graced with wisdom, courage, and encouragement. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That women in crisis pregnancies may have the support and encouragement they need to care for their babies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of Nativity of Mary Parish, may we learn to recognize the Lord in life's unexpected events. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, thank you for listening to our many needs and prayers and concerns here this morning. Those that we have just spoken and those many prayers that we all continue to hold deep in our hearts. And we ask that you grant them all a favorable response. And we pray these things, as always, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so this morning, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, We sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us this morning the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be here this morning in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, remember your church spread throughout the whole world and bring her to the fullness of love. Together with Francis, our Pope, Donald, our Bishop, and with all of your holy people. And remember, in a special way at this liturgy this morning, our family members, our relatives, and our friends who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As we all wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, we do so in prayer. And so we join together now as we sing the prayer that Jesus taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Thank you. In whatever way you feel comfortable, I would invite you now to share some sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shan't under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever near, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may God bless each one of us here this morning in a special way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our liturgy is ended. We now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. And we do that best by the way we love and serve one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I enjoyed praying this morning. Hope you have a good day.